Thank you indeed for sponsoring a segment of this video. Are you more afraid of failure or are you more afraid of success? This has been Hollywood and the media's portrayal of success since before we we're born. So we probably all internalize this in some way, shape or form. But what's on the other side of success? Oh, we don't talk about Bruno. We just banish him from society, blame mental illness, or simply turn a blind eye. You see, success without direction means we'll never truly be satisfied. Think of tech tycoons who need to throw extravagant parties with things that we will not name because this is a family friendly channel to probably feel something and to probably numb whatever it is that they're feeling because something within them isn't being satisfied. Success without fulfillment is hollow and empty. Think of celebrities who just look completely soulless and empty inside. Success without morality will give you the VIPs in Squid Game. So if you thought, what a silly question. Of course I'm afraid of failure. Who's afraid of success? There's actually plenty to be afraid of. We've been sold this version of what success looks like our whole lives and seldom do we take a step back to really ask yourself what success actually looks like. To strive but to not know what we're really striving for can be very scary. So if a lot of these very successful people are still so unhappy and vacant, why are we trying so hard as a society to glorify that and to reach that level of success? I really believe that in life you give what you get so there's nothing wrong with being successful at all. Rather, I hope we can all be successful by our own definitions of success. So how can we actually be successful. First, calibrate your compass. What does success mean to you? Not to your parents, not to your peers, not to your professors, but to you. What does success mean to you? I feel like for most of our lives, we wander around measuring ourselves with external coordinates set by other people, which confuses us and manifests as this gaping void within that can never be filled no matter what we fill it with materially, with substances, escapism, gay dramas, literally anything. Thankfully, the anecdote is simple. Change your external coordinates to internal. Does success mean raising a healthy and happy family? Does it mean winning the Nobel Peace Prize or winning an Oscar? Does it mean making so much money that the next three generations of your lineage will be taken care of? And don't stop there. Challenge yourself by digging deeper and ask yourself, why is this important to me? And do I think this will really bring me the peace and fulfillment we all are seeking, even if we may not know it is what we're seeking? Before we go, on. I get it. This is uncomfortable. This isn't easy. Some of us have been told our whole lives what to do and some have been told how to think even. So remember that good things take time and that it's okay. Our answers to this question will be as unique to us as we are as individuals and our definitions of success will definitely grow with us as we grow as well. For example, in 2014, success to me meant happiness and then it meant being proud of myself, but I quickly crossed that out and chose being at peace. When I started my channel in 2016, success to me meant finding myself, being true to myself, and helping others along the way. In my 2018 podcast with Eileen from Lavender, success to me meant being able to go to bed every night fulfilled and content with who I am as a human and with the way I spent my time. Success to me these days is just a slight elevation from previous years. Continue staying true to myself and my values as I grow, as a human, and in my business with an even bigger emphasis on service and being able to make a positive impact in people's lives. This is something I found very reassuring. Instead of putting the pressure on us to come up with the perfect answer and craft the perfect plan so that we can perfectly execute our vision, what if we learn to internalize the fact that within us, there are many, many great lives to be lived and there's many, many great plans to be executed. So with all of these great plans and all of these great lives within us, we get to choose and we get to chart our own coordinates to wherever it is that we want to go. How beautiful is that? So now that we've calibrated our compasses, what is next? Here is an interesting framework I found in the comment section of a YouTube video as I was doing research for this video. It says, we have three currencies. We have money, we have time, and we have knowledge. Whichever one of these that you need, spend the other two to get it. Mind absolutely blown. Okay, so starting with 
if you need money, spend time and knowledge to get you that moolah. Let's use these three scenarios. I wanted to give these three examples to give like a well-rounded perspective of how this can literally be applied to anyone, no matter what it is that you're doing in your life. The first one, you're someone looking for a more traditional career with your definition of success. Maybe you wanna switch roles. Maybe you wanna switch careers altogether. Maybe you wanna go back to school. No matter the case, the very first thing is to get very clear on what you want. Once you know what you want, it makes it a lot easier for you to think through strengths and weaknesses. And then when you think of strengths, how can I add on to this? And knowing your weaknesses or knowing things that you would like to improve on, you can go out there and find resources online that are free and won't cost you a dime. There's online courses offered by top universities. There's free YouTube videos like this. There's also Indeed's YouTube channel where they help you understand yourself better in the context of an employee and what your potential employer may be looking for during interviews. I'm going to play a really quick and fun clip because they're actually pretty lit. I wish I had this when I was interviewing. I just, just wasn't good at it. I would love to hear about what you're working on and how you got where you are now. Absolutely. I started with small to mid-sized businesses, but I was crushing that size. It's the kind of thing where like either you have it or you don't, and I definitely do. Everybody always wants to talk to me whenever I'm and, at the water. Um, not to, you know, toot my own horn or anything, to but to you know, my own horn or anything, but to my own horn or anything. That was me during interviews back in the day, pitter pattering away, not even remembering what's coming out of my mouth. Anyway, if you guys are looking for any job related resources, Indeed's channel literally has so many amazing resources and videos like the one that I just showed you guys, where they break down how you can show up more confidently and capably in job interviews, in your workplace, and even just in life. All of that was mostly things you can do online by yourself in your own time. The second part is, <laughs> Something that I feel like is completely underrated, something that I definitely shied away from because it involves talking to other humans. Imagine if you were just a bit more open to asking your friends for help or asking your friends to connect you with people who they think would be good for you to talk to. Or if you cold DM'd 10 people on LinkedIn who are a bit more ahead of their career than you are or who have the positions that you are currently looking for to ask them for advice. Maybe ask them for a little mentorship or ask them for a little bit of informational interview. And this is something that I realized myself towards the end of last year and like all of this year. If there are people out there who are significantly smarter than you and more ahead of the career than you, why did I feel the need to do everything on my own when I could have fast tracked my growth and my development kind of goes back to like you don't have to suffer alone moving on to the second example of if you're someone looking to start your own company within your definition of success maybe you're an artist maybe you're a digital nomad maybe you believe you can be the next tech unicorn my stomach just grumbled you can take online courses on how to optimize your etsy shop you can watch youtube videos on how other people successfully run their digital nomadic lives and there's endless business books on how you can start and run your own company. I feel like the human element is still very helpful. If you can talk to someone who's already doing it, if you can ask them questions of what they wish they knew before they started, mistakes that they've made. This is actually why I absolutely love podcasts because it would have been very hard to get access to some of these people. One that I've been listening to most lately is Tim Ferriss's podcast. These are seriously like some of the superstars, the pinnacle, like the top, the very, very top, top, top people in their careers. It's just so precious and so valuable. And a lot of who I am today and the things that I'm doing is largely inspired by the people that I hear on these podcasts, their journeys, their learnings. So the third scenario, you're someone looking to sort out your personal finances. There's a lot that could be said here, but I'll just share one person. Ramit Sethi, rich life exercise. Do yourself a favor and do that. Rich life is less about how to be rich rich and more about how to be rich in your way. Some people want a hundred pairs of shoes. Some people just want their homes cleaned every month. And Ramit Sethi's rich life is actually something James introduced to me and something that we would check in with each other on every quarter to see if we are living our rich life individually and if we're living our rich life together. Just tying in all of these elements 
of being curious and seeking knowledge and spending time to learn about money and then connecting that with people in your life and setting systems together and creating rich lives together and dreaming together. I think that's so romantic. The thread between all these three scenarios is that if there's a will, there is a way. If you really need money, if you really want money, you'll figure out a way. You really will. Because we all have time, we all have knowledge, or we can all gain knowledge. So use those to get the moolah that you want. The second bucket is time. We need time, like for most of us, if you really need time, look on your phone. Pick up your phone right now. Let me just pick up my phone right now and check your screen time. For most of us, we will be appalled and we will be shocked. I was actually very appalled and very shocked when I discovered two weekends ago when I was recording a podcast with Vivian that I spend on average 10 hours a week, 10 hours a week on Instagram. That is 10 hours of time. That could be spent running a marathon. That could be spent meditating. That is 10 hours to do so many things. I could have read a book. How many books have I read this year? Zero. I've started a lot of books, but I haven't finished many. Point here is to be able to figure out what it is that is most worth your time. What is it that you can become world-class at and hone in on that and focus on that and allow other people to help you take care of the other areas and aspects of your life. We'll have to slowly work our way there, but this is the goal. This is the way. Baby Yoda. This is the way. And the last bucket is knowledge. If you need knowledge, spend time or money to beef up your brain. You can go to the library. There's literally millions of books that you can read to make you a much more knowledgeable person. If you guys have been following along voice hugs, I've been sharing a lot about my coaching experience, working with an executive coach. This act of showing up committed to work on yourself and to talk about it with another person whose job is to help you unlock and realize things about yourself that you may not previously known or realized. I feel like a different person. I'm sure it's like a culmination of many things that have happened within the past few months, but I think a big, big change and shift has been coaching. Coaching can be synonymous with having a therapist, even though what they do is different. I think it's just being able to show up on a weekly or monthly basis with someone and to work through the inner stuff. You know, you can even talk to your coaches and talk to your therapist about what success means to you. So these three currencies of money, time, and knowledge, I feel is so wonderful and lovely because no matter where we start off in life, we'll at least have two of them right like we have time and we have the capacity to learn and then over time we can use that to get money and when we get money we can use that to get more time or to get even more knowledge it's it's pretty beautiful just to be able to through a framework see that if you really cared about yourself and if you really care about your future if you just invest time into learning the world is literally your oyster i hope you guys are able to stay strong you're able to stay true to yourself and what you believe is successful what you think success looks like and to not be tempted and to not be swayed by what you see online what you see i don't know even in your friend circles and to always remember what we see is not the totality of the situation some of these people in any walks of life that we look up to may very well be very unhappy miserable empty people and that isn't to put them down but to just have compassion for them while also having compassion for ourselves that it's okay that we don't look like them or that we're not doing what they're doing or that we're not as successful as they are because we're all on our beautiful and unique life paths and life journeys and with that Here's a hug. Ow. Alrighty. Remember to check out Indeed's videos for any tips and tricks if you guys are interested. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ahoy! <laughs> I can't.